Are you done? Yeah. So quarantine's kind of impacting our lives in a lot of different ways. And one way I wanted to share with you guys today is how this new lifestyle has affected my weekly planning and how my weekly planning has changed now that I'm in quarantine and literally don't go outside. If you're new here, my name is Caitlin and my bullet journal is the sky right here. The journal I use is called Astology, which is essentially like a soft cover voyage term with a lot more pages and a grid instead of dots. Previous to uh, quarantine, my bullet journal spreads consisted of having a weekly spread in addition to daily spreads. And this was really helpful for me as a grad student because I had a lot of due dates to keep track of and I had a lot of meetings to keep track of. So having a week at a glance where I could see all of that stuff happening was really helpful. Now, my typical weekly setup wasn't really as effective as it used to be. So I decided last week to make a change and I really liked how it turned out. So I'm gonna be essentially replicating that setup this week and showing you guys how I plan during quarantine. This is like an old faithful. I use this pen for like all my note taking in university. So it has a really special place in my heart, but this is the gel pen I use. It's by Muji. It's the 0.5 and today I'll also be using the hard tip Tombow Food No Soke brush pen. There's also a soft tip. Some people ask me why I choose one over the other. The hard tip is going to give you a lot more control. So I really like using this when I'm doing smaller lettering because it's easier. And for bigger things, I do like to use the soft tip, but if you're just getting into lettering, the hard tip might be better in general because it'll have more control. So it'll be good for learning your stuff. But today, because I'm going to be doing a lot more smaller things, I will be using the hard tip. So I'm going to start on the left page and what this side of the page is going to be, it's kind of a running task list. Essentially, I'm taking my weekly spread, which is normally two pages, and I'm condensing it into one page. So the first part of this kind of task list spread is to write the name of the month so you know what month it is, because that's probably the most important part. <laughs> and dot the I. There she is. All right, so we have the day of the month or the month itself, it's April. And I am gonna write just kind of underneath which days the week starts on and the week ends on. So I'm gonna actually flip to my year to glance. So this week starts on the 13th and it goes until the 19th. So I'm gonna write that down. Great. All right, so that's kind of acting as our title of the month and just kind of letting us know what week we're looking at here because in quarantine, there's no sense of time, or at least that's what I found. Okay, so now I'm gonna move down a couple lines. The nice thing with astrology is it actually has numbers here. So I can see number 10 is where I'd go, but for anyone without um, numbers beside their lines, I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven squares down and here is where i'm going to start my running task list so to start my running task list i start with a dot which goes right here and then i write the initial for every day of the week starting on monday because i do a monday start so this method of task list is called the alistair method what i would do with this is each Day of the week is a column, which we've marked out with the first initial of the day of the week. And then if I have to assign a task to a specific day, I will do a dot under the column of that day so that I know that I need to do that thing on that day. If it's not something that I need to do on a specific day, I'll just do it here. This is kind of like the non-date specific task column, where it's just a dot. 
and that works really well for me. I find this is so, so helpful for kind of delegating to do's on specific days. And that was something that when I started bullet journaling, I really struggled to find something that worked. So finding this was like such a game changer. So for example, on Monday, I'm gonna make my dot because that's how I denote a task. I'm gonna go over here beside this because I wanna write down what I need to do on Monday, which is film, plan with me. And there you go. And so this will be done after I finish this spread, but just to show you guys, if I, so right now I'm working on it. So I would do this, which is just a half cross. But once I've finished it, I complete the X and then I like to draw a line across to the task like that. And that's just so I know that I don't really have to think about it anymore. This is helpful for stuff where if I have to do a task on multiple days, so if this took me like three days and I had three days of doing it, then I know like this symbolizes like it's completely done. Even though I did what I need to do on Monday, it's not done yet until I've actually done this line, if that makes sense. I really hope it does. <laughs> so that is kind of the main part of this task list, but I do like to also include at the very bottom here, a project section and an up next section. So for this section, I'm going to count seven squares up from the bottom. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm just going to write projects here. And you don't need to do exactly seven squares. I just find for me, that's how much room I like. And then I kind of guesstimate where the middle of the page is, which I'm going to go with here. Yeah, why not? And then I'm going to write up next. What I like to do to just help divide these sections is I draw a line just kind of across the page so I know where it starts and ends. And if your sections aren't perfect, it doesn't really matter. If you want to count out the boxes, you can definitely do that, but it doesn't really bother me. I just like to eyeball it. What I like to do in this project section is write down any big kind of multitask things I'm working on. That's kind of what I consider to be a project. The up next section was a lot more helpful <laughs> when I had um, more uni stuff. This week is kind of the closing week for uni stuff for me, but normally I would write upcoming due dates. However, I think now, since I don't have too many of those anymore, I'm going to write down upcoming dates. So like birthdays and stuff like that in the next week or two. So that is pretty much what the kind of weekly starting page looks like. And then what I'm using my right side of the page for is my daily logs. Are you done? So I like to do daily logging in the style of rapid logging, which is essentially the original way the bullet journal happens. <laughs> so I don't set out specific spacing or sections for each day because for me each day has a different amount of tasks and events so it just would be really squishy and it wouldn't really work out i just find this way kind of goes with the flow it's just a little more chill which is nice so for my daily logs i like to start by lettering the day of the week i just like to letter the abbreviation because i do like to make these pretty quick so i'll start with monday and I like my titles to take up about two spaces. This is also a nice way to practice your hand lettering if you're trying to build up your uh, skill and practice. Once I write the day of the week, I draw a line. So because this is two spaces, I take the line in the middle and I use that as a guide to draw a line all the way across the page this. I freehand it because I want to. <laughs> and I stop one space short. And then on the last two spaces before the line ends, I write the date. So Monday is the 13th. So I'll write 13 right here in the last box like that. And that's kind of my 
set up for my daily logging. And then I'll just go on and rapid log as normal. So I'll write a couple things down just so you guys can see. First things first, I believe it's Easter Monday. So I do want to write that down. Then I'm going to write down that I want to film this plan with me. And I also want to edit a group project that I have happening this week. And then I just like keep listing that. And then once the day is over, I would just replicate this for Tuesday and I would just go all the way down. One thing I also do want to mention is I do like to recopy all my tasks. Even if like I don't do it on Monday, I'll migrate it and then write it out again on Tuesday. For some people, this is annoying and I agree. It's extremely annoying, but that's why I do it because sometimes, you know, a task is just something I don't want to do. And it gets to the point where I have to kind of annoy myself into doing it because I just don't want to write it down another time. <laughs> so that's kind of my strategy. All right. So that is pretty much what my weekly setup or weekly and daily setup looks like now that I am in quarantine. This is how it's changed. And honestly, I actually really love this setup and I might consider keeping this setup even after quarantine ends. We'll see though. But I do really like how this kind of functions. I think it's really clean and simple and very functional, but still kind of in my own style and very personal to me, which is awesome. So I hope you guys enjoy seeing how I like to plan my week. I hope you found it helpful and maybe gave you some ideas for how you might want to modify your bullet journal for quarantine. If you have been making changes to your bullet journal, maybe let me know below. I think that'd be fun to talk about. And besides that, uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.